But what, uh, what is the church? Well, let's uh, see first of all what the word church actually means. So if we go to Psalms 22, 22, the Bible says here, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. So we see this Old Testament psalm says congregation. This psalm is actually quoted in Hebrews 2.12 and look at how it's quoted. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. So we don't really need to go to a dictionary to find the meaning of the word church. There's nothing wrong with a dictionary. There's a place for dictionaries. But oftentimes the Bible can define its own words and we can use the Bible as its own dictionary because we see here an Old Testament passage recorded in the New Testament and we see there that the word congregation, which we saw there in Psalms 22.22, in the midst of the congregation, is requoted in the New Testament in Hebrews 2.12 uh, saying in the midst of the church. So we see there that the word church is defined as a congregation. And what is a congregation? A congregation is a physical gathering together of, uh, of people. You wouldn't, call a congre you wouldn't call a congregation of people when they're, when they're all scattered all over the place, would you? You'd say that they're a congregation when they physically gather together. And that's what a church is. And you know, when the, when the Bible uses the word church in regards to you know, a gathering of God's people, it is referring to you know, the, the church of God, the church of Christ. Because even though the word church can just mean any gathering, you know, when you read through the Bible, even though it just uses the word church, it would refer to, obviously, the church of God or the church of Christ. Uh, let's just go to Matthew uh, 16, verse 13. Uh, this is the first pas passage in the Bible where the uh, word church is even used. Uh, let's read from verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say, Some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they shall tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. So this is the first mention of the word uh, church in the Bible. It's in Matthew uh, 16. And we just want to note there that it says, uh, Jesus said, But thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. So there is a distinction between the church that Jesus Christ is building, the church of Christ or the church of God as it's mentioned in the Bible, and just any church, just any gathering of people. Because you have, for example, the church of Satan. You know, they're not a legitimate church. They call themselves a church. And, you know, they are a gathering of Satan's believers. Or you have, for example, the Church of Scientology. So they use this word church because, you know, it's not wrong for them to call it church because the word church just means a gathering of people. But we need to note that in the Bible, you know, obviously we're talking about God's church, the church that Jesus Christ is building, uh, the church of believers, because we obviously have false churches out there. Um, now, I just want to just mention a couple of things in this passage because, you know, a lot of people use this passage to sort of promote that, you know, Peter was the first pope. And they try and say that Jesus is saying here that, you know, uh, in verse um, 18, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And they'll say, see, there you go. Peter was the first pope, and this is the rock that Jesus was going to build the church on, on Peter. And it says here, you see, and, and Peter, it says, I will give thee the keys of the kingdom. 
So there's a singular there that, that Peter was given this privileged position. He was given the keys of the kingdom and whatsoever he bound on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever he singular loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Well, well, number one, you know, we can't take this passage and just run with a doctrine um, and, and isolate it on its own because when we read all throughout the Bible, the rock is always Jesus Christ. So another way that you can interpret this passage is you could say, well, it wasn't Peter was the rock that he was referring to, but the fact that Jesus was the Christ, the son of the living God, and he's building his church on that rock, on that principle and on that doctrine. And when we see throughout all the Bible, I'm not going to turn to all the passages, I'll just turn to a couple, that it's very obvious that the rock that the church is getting built on is not Peter the man, but it's on Jesus Christ himself. Look at this verse in uh, Psalms uh, 18.31. It says here, for who is a God save the Lord and who is a rock save our God? So God is that rock that we build our lives on. And uh, I just want to show you in Matthew 7, 24. When uh, Jesus gives the parable of the wise man and the foolish man, the wise man building his house upon a rock and the foolish man building his house upon the sand and the rock being the Word of God, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Word of God, uh, and the Son of God is the Word of God made flesh. Verse 24 says here, Therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. Now think about it. If you're a wise man when you build your house upon the rock, the church is referred to the house of God, you know, which is the church of the living God, the pillar of the ground of the truth, why would then Jesus build his house on any other rock? You know, Jesus obviously is a wise man. He's going to build his house upon the rock. He's going to build his house on the word of God. He's going to build his house on the Christ, the son of the living God. So we don't want to uh, misinterpret this verse here in Matthew 16. But you might say, well, but look, Peter, it says here, thee, it's a singular. He was given the keys and not anybody else. So, so doesn't that sort of fall into the narrative that Peter was given this privileged position? Peter's what's going to be, uh, the church is going to be built on. Peter is given the keys of the kingdom. Well, let's look in uh, Matthew 18. We just want to compare it to this passage here. This is the second time we see the word church used in the Bible. And just going back to the point I'm trying to make is, you know, when we talk about the church, we're specifically talking about the church that Jesus Christ is building. And I, I think we see this passage here as well uh, of what uh, the church is. It's a gathering together of people in the name of Jesus um, in Matthew 18. Let's look here in... Uh, Let's just read from verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And even he, he neglect to hear them. So you've gone one alone, you've gone with multiple witnesses to correct this brother. Now it says, tell it unto the church. So you bring it in a public Set, setting, but if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. So we see here the context now is dealing with conflict in a church situation. Now look at what it says here. Verily I say unto you. So is this singular or is this plural? This is plural now. Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall, uh, shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So we see here these, this binding and this loosing that was said to Peter before is not really something that was exclusive to Peter because he says the same thing to the church, to, to, to believers. And you know, why does it say thee in Matthew 16? Well, probably because Jesus was talking to only Peter at that time um, and just talking to him as a person. But we see here that it wasn't something exclusively to Peter. Verse 19, again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two, and just know this, this is where I wanted to get to, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, 
There am I in the midst of them. So a church is a gathering together of believers. But it's not just any gathering together of believers. It's when they, I believe it's when they gather together um, for the purpose of Jesus Christ. Gathering together in the name of uh, Jesus Christ. And we see there it doesn't have to be many. It only has to be two is enough to make a church. Two or three, Jesus says. And he says, if you gather together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So we see there that Jesus Christ is the reason for the gathering and that's what makes a church a church and not just any sort of, uh, just any, any, any uh, uh, local gathering of people. So Jesus Christ is the reason. So that's, what, you know, that's why we have Bible reading. That's why we have preaching. That's why we have uh, songs, singing about the Word of God, singing about Jesus. Uh, we pray to God when we come together as a church and we fellowship uh, with the body of Christ. So what, the reason why I want to make that distinction there because you know, church members just getting together and just hanging out that isn't necessarily church because they're not gathering together for the purpose of Jesus Christ. So, you know, if a couple of mates from church go and have a coffee together, is that church? Well, you know, it's a gathering of people, but it's not the church of Jesus Christ in the sense of gathering together in the name of Jesus. Um, and we just want to make that distinction because things like that matter because, you know, when we, when we talk about, you know, women, preaching and teaching in church, which I believe is not right. You know, women should not preach and teach in church. But let's say, for example, a woman gets a class together, like a cooking class together, and, and you know, all those people in that gathering might be believers. But she's cooking, telling them, you know, how to cook a roast or something like that, and she's teaching them something, right? And even bringing in, you know, Bible, maybe Bible principles. Is she teaching in the church? No, because I don't believe that gathering is church because they're not gathered for the purpose of Jesus Christ. They're gathered for the purpose of cooking. You know, so that setting is not necessarily wrong. And I'll, I'll, I guess I'll touch on that a bit more as I go into it in other weeks. But just that distinction in there of how we can determine what is a church and uh, what isn't a church. Now let's go to Ephesians 1, uh, 22 to 23. We'll see a couple of other verses here that show us that the church and we saw already in our in in uh, chapter um i can't remember what, what we turned to but ephesians 1 uh, we will see here that the church is actually called the body of christ uh, look here in ephesians 1 verse 22 and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that Filleth all in all. Uh, let's go to Colossians 1.18. We'll see again where the church is called the body. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Now remember when we talked about the body of Christ, there is one body, but there is not only one church. But because the church is made up of the body of Christ, it can rightly be called the body of Christ. So the church is the body of Christ, but whilst there is one body, there are multiple churches. Um, so there is one body, but can be multiple churches. So the church is like a physical subset of the body, isn't it? So you have the body of Christ, which is every believer. And then when some of those believers gather together, that is a church. Now, why isn't why can there be multiple churches? Because there can be multiple gatherings, can't there, of the body of Christ? You can have a gathering here. There are probably other people gathering in houses and in buildings this morning, um, and, and there are separate churches. But we are all the body of Christ. But there isn't one church. There isn't one universal church because are we gathered together with every believer? No, we're not. There are multiple gatherings. We're not gathered together with every believer. So there is not this concept of a universal church because until every believer is physically gathered together, there will not be uh, one single church. So how can we think of this? Well, you know, I have a body, right? I have a hand, right? And my hand can rightly be called my body, right? My hand is part of my body. So you can say the hand is Victor's body. But I have two hands, don't I? So it's the same with churches. We have a church 
which can be called the body of Christ. There's one body, but there can be multiple churches because a church is a gathering of members of that body. And you know, you only just have to search the word churches in the Bible and you'll find that it appears 37 times. So anyone that's trying to teach that there is only one true church as the Catholics and the Orthodox teach, they teach this concept of a universal church that we're all part of. They're mixing up the body and the church. And when you search the word churches in the Bible, I mean, it appears so many times, how can you possibly support the doctrine of the universal church when so many times you see churches in the Bible? Church here, a church there, the seven churches which are in Asia in Revelation. So there is not this uh, universal church. Now let's look at this verse in 1 Corinthians 11, 18. Now the word church in the Bible, um, it, it's used in two ways. It, it doesn't only refer to the time when we're gathered here, but it also refers to the people that are part of this gathering. Because, you know, and this might get a bit complex, but, you know, it, there are two ways that the word church is used in the Bible. So the church doesn't only exist. The reason why I'm making this point is because the church doesn't only exist when we're gathered and then we, when we disperse, the church no longer exists. The church exists whether we're gathered together or not, but the word is used to describe both. And I just want to show you that. Um, so in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 18, we see here, for first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you and I partly believe it. 1 Corinthians 14 19. So we see here that people are within this gathering, within this church. Look at what uh, um, Paul says here. Yet in the church, so he's saying in the physical gathering, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Um, but then let's look a bit further down. He says here in verse 23, If therefore the whole church be come together in one place, and all speak with tongues, and they come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say, ye are mad? So we see there almost two uses of the word church, because he says, you know, when I, when I speak in the church, saying in the gathering, but then he also says, when the church is gathered together into one place, if therefore the whole church be come together in one place. Now if the church is only... Uh, the body when it's gathered together, how do you then gather that gathering together, if that makes sense? Am I, am I making sense? So we're not only the church when we're together, we're also the church when we're not together because we are, have been part of this gathering. So we see there that somebody can be in the church, but also the church can be gathered together. So it's, so it's not only the church exists when we're together because if you're already gathered together, how do you gather something that's already gathered together? Does that make sense? So we can see there that the, the word church refers to the people that are part of that gathering, even though they may not be gathered together. Uh, look here in Acts 8. It says here, um, you know, as for Saul, verse 3, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women committed them to prison. So Saul here, when he's persecuting the church, I mean, obviously the church is finding it hard to gather together and he's going into every house trying to find these Christians. So the church is scattered, even though they're still uh, the church. Um, and another thing here in Acts 14, I just want to show you. Acts 14, verse 27. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. So again, gathering the church together. So the church is not only the time when we gather together, it is the people of that gathering, even though they're not gathered together. Otherwise, how could you um, say that you're gathering the church together if it's only the church when they gather together? So how can you sum that up in one sentence? I know this is like a minor point, probably not important, but I'm just showing you here the church and how the word is used differently. So you can think of it this way. You know, we are in the church, but we also are the church. So it's both. And the, and the Bible uses the word in both ways, I believe. 